What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Moose episode 142, a not palindrome, not prime number episode. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford, alongside the Broccoli Brock McLaughlin, returning. I'm back. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was telling Drew on the way up here in the elevator that I'm, uh, I'm very confused if I slept last night or not. So I'm, uh, I'm wrapping my brain around that right now. So we're gonna I feel that. very tired. It's been a hell but of a week, man. I'm here. It's been a hell of a week, man. Not just for me, but everyone, you yeah, know? Yeah. Everyone. All the people around the world. Yeah. All the people around the world, man. We had, we had some weird, old, weird shit. You know, I left social media. I left everything, but I kind of caught up on the news this morning, and it's been... Uh, you returned just like Eddie Brock it's did. It's been fucking and, dark out there, yeah. all right? Believe women. Yeah. Yeah. I've been having some fun conversations about that. The, Real fun conversations about that. I had, I had somebody tell me that uh, somebody brought up the... Um, uh, the the trial of a local or uh, a national radio host here uh, that works for the same company that I work for or worked past tense. They said, "Yeah, well, there was more going on there than people realize." And I, I like, I have some inside information, and I just thought to myself, "Motherfucker, you don't you don't have you don't have a fraction of the quote unquote inside information that I have, and I know that you're completely wrong because this person was genuinely and earnestly trying to defend that person, and I was like, "Holy fuck." So yeah, um, fuck Brett Kavanaugh, fuck, fuck the the the, uh, the the Republican Party, fuck uh, the Democrat that voted him yes, yeah, and that that disembodied voice you just heard the ghost of the most Drew McMillan. There, I've introduced you. That's, oh yeah, now I'm you can here, ramble. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> that, that's Drew's voice if you couldn't tell. Anyways, uh, of course, this being the Game Moose podcast, you can hear us every single Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time over on game-moose.com and podcast services around the globe, except for Spotify and SoundCloud. You can't hear us there. Uh, if you like what we do, of course, please rate us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. I always call it iTunes. I'm too used to it being iTunes. Yeah, it's Apple Podcasts and Google Play Podcasts. Yeah, go rate us there as well. Because they, they rebranded. I don't know if you can review on Google. Sure you we can, can tell them to, and if they can't find the option, I'm who cares? Sure you can. You give us stars or some shit. Yeah. You can write a review underneath. Give there us stars. Go. Do that. Stars. You can be like, yo, this show fucks. Yeah. 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 This does. show was better than Venom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not a high bar to hit, apparently. <laughs> well, no, but you know, I'll take it, man. You know? Yeah. More more exciting than sitting there for an hour and a half of Venom. Yeah. Yeah, that movie looks real, real bad. Like, yeah. I, I mean, when we thought it was coming out, I was like looking at the trailers as like, hey, this movie could be really bad. Um, and now that I've seen like all the clips and stuff like that and everyone's reaction, it looks super bad. It, like super bad, but not like the movie super bad. No, 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 that starring, was actually good. Starring Jonah Hill and McLovin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. more just along the lines of why do they think that having a Venom movie without Spider Man would be good? I don't know. <laughs> Venom, Venom is uh, lame. It is it, and, and that's coming from someone who really likes Venom. Yeah, like, like Venom I, is super lame. Yeah, Venom <laughs> is from a time like a very cringy time in like the late eighties, early nineties, where everyone had to. So be, the best time. Yeah, like like bulky edge lords, right? Mm -hmm. Like that Venom is. Spider Man's Dark Edge Lord, and it's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's a way to make that character interesting, and uh, having Tom Hardy play him as like some kind of like weird New Yorker, but now lives in San Francisco, but can't keep his accent the same the whole movie. Yeah, because you don't cast Tom Hardy to talk. Yeah, <laughs> no. no, no. But there is a makeout scene between Venom and Tom Hardy for those of you at home that want to ship. Yeah. Uh, a symbiote and a man. But yes. they're like well, the same I mean, person. And I would watch Tom Hardy make out with anything. He yeah. is a very attractive male. And but. Let's be realistic. Like, the symbiote penetrates him, like, everywhere when they, when they become one. Do so. you think the editor, when he put that line in that said the turd in the wind was referring to the actual movie itself? Because he knew. Most likely. He was like, oh, this fucking movie's going to be <laughs> a turd in the wind. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, Victor Lucas used the exact same line, so there you go. I feel yeah, like most people did. It wasn't very inventive or creative. No, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it's Sony grasping at straws in the worst way, right? Like, yeah. it was like we have the rights to an iconic Spider-Man villain but we have to share the rights with Spider-Man right now because we fucked up Spider-Man so bad. So we're going to make a movie sans Spider-Man about a Spider-Man villain. Like, nowhere in that equation was that ever going to be a good movie. No, but don't worry. Jared Leto's Morbius is coming. Mor Morbius is coming also, out next. they keep saying that uh, The Sinister <laughs> Six may actually come out. No. That, that it would movie. never come out. But they're do Sony are doing a really good-looking Spider-Man at the 30 minutes of our premiering right now. 
So while the, we're in this uh, podcast, the, the, and just yeah. enter the Spider Verse, yeah. which looks yeah. incredible. Yeah, it looks really great. Because New York Comic Con also yes. going on while we're recording yes. this as well. It is yes. with things and Factual. stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, it uh, into the Spider Verse looks really exciting. I love Spider Man, and this is all like my favorite Spider Mans. Gwen looks really great. Spider Noir. She looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Spider Ham, John Sp- Mulaney looks perfect. Spider Ham looks so funny. <laughs> yeah. Like there's one of the really th- that really funny bit where like they're like they're all uh, crawling on the ceiling trying to avoid being seen, and they're all kind of moving together as like a security guard swings around in his chair, and then he swings around and catches them, and uh, he he goes oh, and Spider Ham's reaction was what you guys don't have talking animals in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Yeah, I'm really pumped about that, but that's because it's. Um, it's like this. It's like the guys did the Lego Movie, right? No, no. no who is it? It's I don't some. Know. It's some talented people who are smart. And, they look talented. It yeah. looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. An old Peter Parker, the fucking Peter Parker, singing the Christmas, <laughs> doing the Christmas album. So good. So good. Yeah, I'm down for that. Um, by the way, if you want to see something that is uh, like what? very very good. Uh, watch Maniac on Netflix. That yeah, it was it's, so uh, fucking It's trippy good. as all hell. Oh, yeah. I watched that all week because I didn't play any video games. And Kidding, and Kidding Rules is Michelle Gondry's show at Jim Carrey. Oh. It is fantastic. There's a clip going around on Twitter, and it was had hundred or 900,000 retweets today about the make, like, behind-the-scenes look of the show. That one that shot? One th- yeah, the one shot. Where it's like everything's, like, changed. So, like, yeah. The whole thing is, like, they have, like, a computer-controlled shot where, like, they're, they're panning around a room. And as the pan goes, the, the the room is changing and updating as, like, sort of, like, the years are going by. Uh, and they did it all in real time. So, like, when the camera is pointed one way, there's people frantically working behind the camera to change the scene as the camera spins around. It's not, like, CG trickery. Or it's nuts. Like yeah. It's really, really cool. The show's really good. Yeah. It's nice to see Jim Carrey back. Yeah, yeah. He's still a lunatic. He's still crazy. But he's doing something interesting. Well, I, it's just I, kind of his bit, man. Yeah. He makes some good art, man. Yeah. I'm really into him. I like his appearance on um, uh, uh, Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher was very inspiring. Mm. Where he came out and just said, hey, look, like, stop being fucking shitty assholes, you know? And healthcare is kind yeah, of important. Bill Maher should stop being a shitty asshole. Yeah, Bill Maher. He did some stupid person. shit this week. Yeah. Everyone's favorite YouTube streamer, Boogie, did some shitty stuff this oh, week because that guy's a fucking loser. Uh, it's been a shitty week, hasn't There's it? There's so much negativity right now. It makes yeah. me sad. Yeah. That's okay. We have some positive things. We're going to talk about Assassin's Creed. That, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Good segue. Good Thank segue. You. Thanks. We're going to talk about Assassin's Creed. So, Drew and Brock, we went to this very fancy party this week with our friends at Ubisoft. We did. We went to the Assassin's Creed launch party. We did. To hang out with a bunch of cool cats. Factual. Yep. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, of course, out right now. Yeah. Uh, if when you're listening to this, it's a video game that's available in in stores now. It came out on Tuesday, right? Yesterday. Yeah. yeah well, it came gold out on Tuesday. Right if yeah, if you have the gold edition. Um, of course, my review is up on the site as we mentioned last week. I give it a ninety eight percent. I really, 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 really love this game. Like it's been, it's one of the best action RPGs I've played in years, and I haven't even finished it yet. I'm in the same boat. I I love this game. It's very good. It's it's very I, much. I was worried that it was going to be way too much like Odyssey, Origins. Origins yeah. I'm going to mix this up because yeah. I don't. I hate that the names are so similar. But it is it is quite different. Mm-hmm. Like it is. I love the characters in this game. Yeah. The story is okay. Yeah. The side think, missions are really really good. Yeah. A friend of mine asked me. He said like, so is this game really good? And I'm like, do you like open world action RPGs? And he was like, yeah, I love them. I'm like, then play this game. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. doesn't feel like an Assassin's Creed game in the slightest. Like, I'm it, wearing heavy armor, sneaking up on people. very fi- much feels like The Witcher 3. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got Witcher 3 vibes written all over it. Like, I mean, I, Bioware I, game. I was playing, I, I, so I've only played it at the launch party, as yeah. much as I've played it, uh, which was only for a couple of, uh, like, or maybe about you, an hour in You total. climbed a dick. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I did that. <laughs> uh, but on my way to climbing the dick, and I'll get to the dick in a minute, uh, I found a resource node. There was a little chunk of rock and I walked over to it and the person smashed it and it went clink and, and and then I got like plus one iron or something. Yeah. And I was like, huh, so it's that game. Yep. Uh so it's got like very, very so there's progression hooks and stuff like that oh, in yeah. it. But more importantly, as we mentioned last week, you can climb everything. Literally everything. So just like Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Like back in the old days, like you had to like the whole thing with Assassin's Creed was you had to, you, there were only certain handholds, right? You yeah. held down the climb button, but you could only, and you had to find sort of like strategic paths, but now it's like, you know, you can just climb anything. You hold the climb button and you climb stuff. 
And they do a really good job of making it seem as though, like, so, as Brock alluded to, I climbed a giant statue of Zeus because I thought that'd be fucking neat. And, like, there aren't, like, obvious handholds, but, like, as the person's climbing up, it's not just, like, oh, they're just mantling. It's not like they just have, like, this generic, like, I'm just climbing yeah. something. It actually looks like they're grabbing yeah. into crevices and cracks. They make it look very the, realistic. They, they, they must have done yeah. something, like, procedural with the bitmaps or something, the bump maps, to make it seem as though you're they're actually grabbing yeah. parts of the rock to make it make sense. But the statue of Zeus, more importantly than that, which is very large, is is fully intact. <coughs> Complete hang down. Uh, well, so, these aren't ancient ruins, Drew. This yeah. is this is what this, this is, is the real, real thing. This, this is real the shit's happening right now. Yeah. So uh, I climbed down Zeus's chest after climbing on his head, uh, and then and then just left the uh, the character dangling. You, you on dangled. His, you dangled on his dangle. Uh, on his dangle. Yeah, just yeah. hanging on the testicles. Yeah. Uh, right. Not the shaft. It was not a generous shaft, um, as we discussed. No. 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 But you know, Greeks famous for their modesty. There mm. you go. So now. There is something different in this one. Yep. There's branching dialogue options, yep. which I don't like. I don't find them have any purpose in this game. So wait a minute. Is well, this game Dragon Age? What's happening? It, it pretty much is, actually, because there's, cause there's uh, dialogue choices, but there isn't a morality system. So, no. again, very similar to Dragon Age. And uh, I actually think the dialogue choices get better as you go throughout the game mm. because some of the choices you make at the very beginning – affect the rest of the like the later on in the I game. haven't seen enough to really see yeah I also don't like the boating I still don't like the boating I didn't like it in Origins yeah. and it's back again it's better than or in Origins it is yeah, it's I not it's not perfect but I'm still not a big fan of the boating I wish they could have got rid of that but people so many people ask them to bring the boating back that's why yeah. it's there I know, the, there, the I boats, know there's some psychopaths out there plus, who it's, like that. plus the, it's, a, it's such a big part of exploring Greece is a lot of it's yeah, just right. islands, right? Greece is. Island. I'm fine with like the little boat, like the little paddle boat, but the actual big boat where you have soldiers and stuff, yeah. not a fan of it's that. It's called a trireme. But the best part about your boat is that all your dudes on the ship will start singing as you as you row your boat. Wow. If you and if you have if you're if you're a man, you have a male crew, and if you're a woman, you have a female crew. And apparently, your female crew sings different. Well, you champions. can also you can also you, uh, earn different. Crews throughout the game, oh, very cool. like I have the the female assassins uh, on my crew, and they sing a completely different song than the the uh, ancient Greece. It's still a better crew. boating game than Sea of Thieves. Oh yeah, can well, we get Amazonians? Are there Amazonians in this? Is that a I will not spoil the rest of the the rest of the crews, but okay. there are some really unique ones. Cool ones that you would not expect. Mm, there's, there's a lot of a uh, lot of hints to the past Assassin's Creed. <laughs> eventually, but okay. this but game it doesn't feel like an Assassin's Creed. For a very long time. But there's a, but there's a reason why, though, because yeah. this game takes place before Origins, before the Assassin's Order is established. Which is kind of weird, because they said that Origins was the first one. Well, again, this is like them going before... We knew at the end of Origins, if you... Spoilers for the end of Origins. Uh, when you go to... When you get to the end of that game, uh, the present-day people talk about how they have to go back farther. So we knew that this game was going to take place in the past. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. So we knew that this was coming, so it makes sense. But that's why it doesn't feel like an Assassin's yeah. Creed game, at least from the story-wise. Like, it still has some of the elements in it that, again, I, I don't want to spoil because I do think that there are a lot of really cool surprises in there, mm -hmm. uh, especially yeah. later in the game. Um, but, yeah, I, I was very impressed with it overall. Um, you can definitely tell, though, this is made by a different team than the Origins mm -hmm. team, though, because um, what ended up happening, and we learned this at the, the panel that they had at uh, the, the launch party, is... Uh, basically, the Origins was developed by the same, mostly the same core team that did Unity. And then this game was developed by most of the core team that did uh, uh, Syndicate. And they were sort of developed in tandem with each other. So, like, they knew that Origins was adding RPG elements. Um, so they knew that they had to make it a big part of this game, but they wanted to make it feel very different than that game. Right. And it definitely does when you play it, for sure. So the one thing I noticed was I didn't have a Hidden Blade, guys. Nope, nope, no hidden blade. You you still stab people though with a, with a with a fantastic spear. The spear of Leonidas. It's very short. Yep, and you can get like Zeus's oh. dick. Yeah, like <laughs> Zeus's dick. <laughs> oh, burn on Zeus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yo, spite me, you mighty smiter. <laughs> yeah, careful, he might actually do that. Yeah, the Zeus, knowing Zeus, you'd like you'd bone down with your mom or something. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and then I'd have a snake for a brother. Yeah, yeah. Snake, bro. Mm. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be kind of interesting. He could kind of choke me, daddy. Okay, you too know, far. Too I, far. Is the inference there that you're going to have sex with your snake brother? 
Your snake half brother. Is that wrong? I mean, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I guess the motto of Assassin's Creed is "Nothing is wrong, everything is permitted." So let's let's go with that. Right. It's true. Yeah. It's oh, true. nice. Good reference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going back to the, like, so like, Assassin's Creed is very much taking the fiction away from the weird sort of like Renaissance inspired philosophy that it kind of came from. Mm-hmm. And is going way off in its own. It's in its own weird little world tangent. now. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I was excited about this is because I loved Assassin's Creed 2 so much because mm-hmm. it was set in Italy. Yeah. Uh, and it was a place that I had traveled in extensively. It's a me, an assassin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the part where you make the yeah. pizza and then kill yeah. the person with it. Uh, <laughs> or you choke the guy with a noodle. Um, but uh, I've also, like, I really want to play this because I. I've traveled a lot in Greece as well. Mm-hmm. I love I love both of those parts of the world. I love the Mediterranean in general. So it's really, that was always like a really fun experience to like, in Assassin's Creed, climb a tower and go like, oh shit, I know that square. I've been there. Yeah. Right? Because that's one of the wonderful things about Europe is that, that a lot of those places changed. still exist. Yeah. Uh, they they don't always change that much. Now in the case of Greece, things have changed a lot. Well, it's all, yeah. It's I was all falling say, apart. Most of There's it's a lot of scaffolding. Ruins. But it's still there. Yes. It's, yeah, still it's still there. there. They, they put the Peloponnesus. Well, yeah, they talked about it too at the, the, the panel that they they actually traveled to Greece and took Parthenon. pictures of all the, the landmarks there and they did their best to recreate them mm. like what they would actually look like. Yeah. So. That's really cool. Temple of Athena in Athens. Yeah. Yep. Yes. No. Yep. Excellent. You can climb to the top of it and hang out. Cool. Cool. Yeah, the, the Parthenon. Now, Ryan, is jam. you feel like the person that would probably play without, like, the map markers on. Because you can play it two exploration ways. Exploration mode, yeah. Yes, you can play in exploration mode, which means you don't know where your missions is. They just tell you they're, like, it's, by a big forest. It's very much like Breath of the Wild, where they give you hints as yeah. to where you're supposed to go, but they don't exclusively tell I you. I didn't play go. that way, because that would drive me absolutely bananas. Yeah. But that, I feel that, like that's up your alley. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. In principle, that sounds, like, kind of fun and neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it sounds like when playing a video game that would frustrate me. Frustrate I, me because again, yeah. like I'm in the, the situation where it's like if I'm playing a video game, I've got like half an hour, an hour, forty five yeah. minutes in between, like walking my dog and making dinner and picking up my girlfriend and doing whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, I I want to feel that sense of accomplishment in those those small bites, which is why I like I like certain types of games. So like I can go on Destiny and play a strike and then be done and feel good about it. But if I don't, if the you're going to find the thing is an unknown quantity that stresses me the fuck oh, yeah. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, it, and again, like it forces you really to like listen to the dialogue very carefully in a way that you normally wouldn't. Like it really does a good job of immersing you in the experience as more than a lot of other open world games do, which is why I like it. Um, Speaking of branching dialogue and choices. Segue. Uh, you can play as a boy or a girl in this yep. game. You and can it, play someone with a penis or someone with a vagina. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, there is a reason for it in the story. Yeah. Brock, did you play as penis or vagina? Guy. He played as penis and he played as vagina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, they have You be right? me, by the way. Ryan Turford. Right, Ryan. They I can't pointed, see I, you pointing. Yeah, I pointed Through the audio. Uh, Ryan, Ryan played as... Uh, Cassandra. Cassandra and you played as Alexios? Yes. Is Alexios? Yeah. yeah. We met, we met Alexios. Or at least I did. I don't uh, know if you guys the, met him at the party. The actor who played Alexios? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. He's a cool dude. I didn't. He said I was too good looking to stand next to him. I said, okay, man. <laughs> did that's he genuinely say that? <laughs> <laughs> no. That would be so weird. Have you met actors? Because they say shit Yeah, like they that. do say yeah. that, yes. Yeah. No, he seemed like a very nice guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I saw him across the room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, come out, came out and hung out with everyone after, uh, after the panel. Cool. That was really cool. But, yeah. So my question is for you guys is what's the difference, though? Like, should I care? I watched one thing. I watched, like, a video that, like, GameSpot put up, which was, like, here's the difference in the di- dialogue. And it was uh, the characters talking to a horny old woman who's like, ah, my husband, uh, like, yes. can't fill, fulfill all my carnal needs. So I just go out and get my fuck on, and I'll totally bow down with you. And and so that was what she said to the male character. And then what she said to the female character was the same thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was it, like, I'll fuck y'all. And the answer is, and, and this is something like, we talked about a little bit with uh, Melissa, which I'm going to get to in a second, Yeah. Um, is that they wanted to make sure that it felt like your choice for that didn't matter. Like, you could choose to be male or female, and you weren't penalized for picking one or the other. Yeah. Um, so they they made it as close to as possible. That said, there are differences, but they are later in the game. Okay. And in stuff that I don't want to spoil, but it actually, they do something really cool with that. Is, yeah, it, is it like, there's like too. a scene where like, yeah, you do get, uh, I think you get a different weapon choice off the start. Yeah. But you end up, you end up being able to use all yeah, the same weapons everything. eventually. Yeah. I, I imagine like, if I were them, like, so you want to combine like the acts, uh, uh, the, the aspects of like the characters, like gender and sexuality with the notion of this is a stealth game. So maybe there's a part where like you're hiding 
uh, under like a like a like a sheet, mm-hmm. and then as the male character, you get an involuntary er- erection, so you have to hide that. And that's like that's like yeah, there's a button prompt for tucking your boner. If only, yeah, that's not how this game works. Though. Okay, that's too bad. Uh, and but this game is very much a stealth game, though. Like if you like games like Metal Gear, so it's an open world RPG stealth game. Yeah, well, I guess that's that's kind of like the last Metal well, that, Gear game. Yeah, it is. Right? It is that. In fact, that's how I play this game because right. I don't I don't run in there guns blazing. Like yeah. just I I'm gonna walk up and just light my swords on fire and then fight people. I sneak around in the bushes. Oh, I light my shit on fire. Assassinate them. Yeah. I just go fucking all ham. You've got like like the teleport stealth kill from uh, Middle Earth uh, Shadow of War in this game. You can teleport. You can teleport using the power of the staff of Leonidas. You basically throw the spear at them. It kills them stealthily and then you teleport the spear and pull it out of their neck. It's great. Like because magic. There's a yeah. Because magic. Huh. It there's a re, there's an in-game explanation for this that huh. I want to talk about. Huh. Yeah. There's all kinds of other abilities. Again, you can light your swords on fire. Okay. And then attack them with fire swords if that's what you want well, to do. Greek fire was a big thing in history. Like I could. You can also a bit of a stretch you can also you poison it. enchant your weapons and then whack them with poison. Well, yeah, poison is also a very, is not magic. You can also Spartan kick people off cliffs and be like, this is Sparta. And Spartan you kick is so fucking dope. It's hilarious. It's so dope. It's all about the front kick. Have right? you ever have you ever Spartan kicked a bear before? I have. I have not. I have. It, it killed the bear. <laughs> the bear flew off the cliff. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to ask another important question here. All right. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this question. Okay. Is there an animus in this game? Yes. Yes. To, to be fair, that's not a spoiler. That's every Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> that's just how they do the plot. But as we talked about last week, though, Drew, um, now that I'm much farther in the game, I'm actually pretty close to the end now. Um, you, you were 40 hours in on on Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah, like when now, we went to the party. And, is, and now I'm on uh, the final chapter of the game. Okay. Um, because I, I've decided to go try and beeline the rest of the story and then go do everything else yeah. at this point. Um. Yeah, the the you go to the animus like three times. Okay. Like go back, like sorry, go back to the present day from where okay. I am. It's not. It's very light. So if you're one of the people who does not like the present day stuff in Assassin's Creed, you pretty much throw it out the window. This game. See, like that's the stuff that, as much as I love the history, I love that there was a cool sort of weird balance of that in two, mm-hmm. which is why like three didn't have that as much, and then they killed off my favorite character. And then in four, Desmond Miles was your favorite character. Yeah, I really liked it. Desmond was great until, and then they fucked him up in three. Well, yeah, uh, they completely changed how he looked for some weird reason. Yeah. Um, and yeah, anyway, and then by the time we hit, uh, uh, we time we hit four, the animus stuff in that was it was interesting. It yeah. was different, but of course, like you weren't playing as a character that I had any kind of connection to anymore. So this is like mm-hmm. one of the big reasons why I stopped playing that game. Yeah. Is I loved the 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 I love the whole pirate shit in four. I know you don't like pirates. I love the yeah, boat stuff. Yeah, of and course. Like, the ship to ship combat in four was really really fun. It was mm-hmm. really interesting. Like the, the Caribbean is beautiful, and like visiting that and climbing yeah. like trees and shit. And I think the the ship combat, for example, is just as good in this game as it was in four. That's cool. I and mean, well, that sounds great. Uh, but my problem was I was really engaged in that story, and then yeah. like three, it felt like they bunked it. I was like, four, are they gonna are they gonna save it? Are they gonna p- pick it up? And like, no, they didn't. And yeah. then. Uh, sounds like in in the subsequent games they just kind of like have like pushed it further and further under the rug. That's because people kept giving them the feedback that they don't like playing in present day. I don't know why yeah. I like the present day. Yeah. shit. well, that's well, I mean, it's not that I don't think the present day isn't the problem. It's yeah. what you do in yeah. the present yeah. day and that's the issue. It's boring. I wanted to tie it back. Like start yeah. bringing some shit yeah. in. Like yeah. let's get some more info. And the thing is, they're build. I think they're building something interesting with the present day stuff because now they are. If you played Origins, it's the same character from Origins yeah. in the present day, and they're building a story with this character. Okay, that, that's pretty interesting. So while you don't go back to the present day, that often I think the times that you do, it's it's worth. Like it's worth it. Um, I mean, you're still not doing anything super exciting. You're not sneaking around present day and then murdering people yet. Mm-hmm. I hope that one day we get that game where where you in the, in the present you're you're doing this some of the stuff you're doing in the past in the present. Right. I hope we get to that point. Or one day I would love an Assassin's Creed game that's in the present. That's okay. just about like an assassin, like an assassin uh, who's trained using the animus who's. Basically, your open world is the present day world. Yeah. I think well, that would be really cool. We were all waiting for that. Yeah. Right? We all thought that that's what they were building towards. I really thought that after three, that's what they were building towards. Yes. And then then they killed off the character, and then you're just like, uh, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so the party was fun, though. Yeah. That was good we got to, We got to meet uh, some awesome people again. Uh, the panel was fantastic. Uh, we got to, again, we learned so much about the game with uh, Scott, the director, and then uh, Melissa, uh, who's interviewed, by the way, you can hear on the site right now, uh, Melissa McCorby, she is the narrative director for the game. Yeah. Uh, I talked to her all about uh, the story of uh, this game. Uh, we didn't have a ton of time with her, so it is a pretty short interview, but... Yeah. Um, I, we got some good stuff out of her. So. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, she's interesting. She's, she's very young. Yeah, she's very new to the business. She's very interesting because she has a very different perspective on some things. Yeah, but also very clearly a big history nerd, and that yeah. I enjoyed. <laughs> she so. totally like geeked out anytime she was talking about history stuff, which was yeah. totally fun. Um, and then Scott uh, was cool to talk to too because uh, him and I talked after the panel. Um, he was the director on uh, Saints Row two, three, and four. <laughs> And then he was the director on Syndicate. So it was actually really cool to see his journey. And I as well. love Syndicate. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I thought Syndicate fucking really I mean, it was my favorite game in the series before this one. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't played Syndicate yet. I, I love need to sit down and play that. Syndicate. It's, it's yeah. such a good game. Yeah. Um, but even like Saints Row 3, I love uh, as well. Like it, it's an no, amazing it's open. It. Yeah. But it, <laughs> well, it's a very loose open world game, but I think it's a really well designed open world game. Yeah. Um, so that's what I liked about that. So it was cool to, to talk to him about that. Like him and I talked about exploration mode. Cool. Um, and he had a lot to say about that. And he's like, I can't. He couldn't believe they actually got it into the game. That's what, that's yeah. what he was saying. Like, he this was whole amazed. concept of like going back to one of the things I really enjoyed about Assassin's Creed is this notion that like there's sort of like these recreations of these mm-hmm. ancient things that still have this very real connection with the real world now, right? Yeah. And being able to visit those and get a sense of what they're like. I mean, there have been whole TV shows about like, hey, what did the pyramids look like? Like the pyramids. For example, you know, what we're used to seeing them now is completely not what they looked like uh, uh, like 4,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So they were completely clad in white limestone and had a gold top. So they were like beautiful, bright white with a, with a, a, a golden top to them. And then that's something that you could show and explore in Origins, for example. Yeah. Or like you could the, run down the pyramids. The Temple of Athena, which is like this is supposed to be this giant, beautiful statue of Athena inside the Parthenon. It's like, you know, or like the, uh, you know, there's there's so many fun things to yeah. explore in ancient Greece, the Colossus of Rhodes, like all these things that are gone, but you can now sort of reimagine using as much historical information as we can in sort yeah. of like a 3D space. Really cool. Exactly. And you, you can climb all over them. Yeah. Also, I'm really excited to see when uh, Discovery Mode comes to this game as well, which was like the educational mode the that educational, was in yeah. Origins. I'm interested to see what they do I like in this game lot. with that. That's yeah. a cool feature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think... You and I are both pretty impressed with this game. Yeah, sure fuck yeah, this game fucks. If you yeah. if you like open world RPGs like The Witcher or Dragon Age Inquisition, go get this game. Yeah, I, awesome. I gotta say it's though, got like hints of Skyrim in there too. Like yeah. it's cool. It's really yeah. good. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 really I'm very very curious about this game, and I'm 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 excited to play it. I think it's the first time in a long time I'm like, wow, this. Seems like, like something new that's really going to grab me. Yeah. Especially because, like, so. we've had an interesting history on the cast with Assassin's Creed. Yeah. When we started the cast, you were like, man, Assassin's Creed's awesome. And I'm like, man, Assassin's Creed sucks. And yeah. now it's like, we've changed roles, but then now I'm trying to wheel you back in because they're good I, now. I don't think it necessarily, I mean, <laughs> they've changed. you were really hardline to, like, no, I don't want to play it. It's just like, it's just, I have a lot of apathy towards Assassin's Creed. Right. And this is cracking it a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. So. We, it's okay, Drew. You can come back. It's fun. It's cool. fun now. Um, speaking of Assassin's Creed, though, there is one other thing I wanted to touch on yeah. uh, as our next topic, which is uh, this week. Um, a lot. I've got a few questions on Twitter about this, so I wanted to make sure to bring it up on the cast. Yeah. Um, Polygon has run a series of articles this week, um, talking about how the basically the game itself, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, is almost pay to win, or not pay to win, but basically, in order to enjoy the game, you have to pay 10 extra dollars. The 10 extra dollars being part of the store for uh, the Helix Credit Store. Yeah. Using in-game currency where you can purchase a 50% bonus boost to the their XP. Um, reading over these articles, though, um, it's very obvious that the person who was playing had the expectation that what they were looking for in this game was not an open-world RPG, they were looking for, with with levels and gear gear and a progr- uh, like a gear progression system. What they were looking for was the traditional Assassin's Creed experience, where no matter like p- characters didn't have levels, you just snuck up on someone and and you could assassinate them and they'd be dead. So to give you some context here, and and this is really important because this is how a lot of people judge shit like that, right? Like yeah, it's the headline, right? Yeah, and 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 internet outlets create clickbaity headlines. 
right? We know this. Like, this mm-hmm. is like their their revenue depends on you clicking on their shit. Yep. And Polygon is just as guilty as any other uh, outlet. But the problem with this is, is that, uh, uh, like, this headline that I'm going to read to you is very clickbaity, but then yeah. the, the contents of this don't, don't <laughs> exactly live up to that, right. which is Assassin's Creed Odyssey has a huge grinding ma- microtransaction problem. And I said this to a bunch of people in, like, a, a forum that I was having a conversation with about, like, like, the big problem with that, number one, is grinding is relative. Right. Like what is grinding for you is not grinding for me. Brock, did you feel like you had to grind through this game? Did you do things? Have you had to do stuff over and over again? No. Like that's because yeah. the side missions are really good. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and there's a reason to go explore stuff or yeah. do other things. And like, no, there's yeah. like, like no like, sense of grinding because there's this such a, an amazing open world game where there's so much things to do. And like, see. it's not even that you can't go anywhere and suddenly you get faced with enemies that are five levels higher than you. There are some areas that are like that. Like, no. It, it puts you on a very clear path of these are the areas you should check out first. Yeah. And then this is, and 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 sort of go from there. See. Without telling you what to do. To me, like, grinding is about repetition. Yeah. And it's, and, and how grindy it is, is how much you, how much of a, a taste you have for the repetition of that particular game, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Destiny is just grinding, period, right? Like, it's about, like, there's like X number of the same uh, events and encounters and you yep. just repeat them over and over and over again ad nauseum yeah. with some stuff to kind of switch it up. I mean, all video games essentially do that. Like you're doing the same, like, like principally yeah. you're, you're, you're hitting the same sets of buttons and fighting bad yeah. guys and it just escalates and changes, changes slightly. So it's just a matter of like, does this feel too repetitive? Mm. Right. And that's very objective. Right. But, I mean, every person I've talked to has said, no, it doesn't feel too repetitive. Yeah. And not only that, the game itself doesn't bombard you with, a, a, a ma- a, like, the message of the day. Go, go, you can spend uh, this much money on the uh, the Helix credit store or anything like that. It gives you Helix credits once in the game, <laughs> and then you can earn them uh, additionally after that, where it gives you a message saying, hey, by the way, we've given you free Helix credits for doing something, yeah. like fulfilling an achievement. You can go buy stuff at uh, pressing, uh, like, going here. Yeah. And it doesn't talk about the XP gr- like the XP bonus or any of the other cosmetic only stuff that they sell on the the Helix credit store. Yeah, it's just like it tells you once. By the way, this is this exists, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. this is like why I stopped reading Polygon and so many like IGN and Gamespot because yeah. this stuff is brutal. Like yeah. they don't fucking play the game. They just write a goddamn article that's just full yeah. of lies. Yeah, oh, like the, the the presence of microtransactions does not in of itself mean that there's something sort of like yeah. morally or ethically problematic about what they're doing. This is this is not the end of Shadow of War, the the, the final chapter of Shadow of War, where basically it was like this conquest, like 10, 10 month conquest thing and it was very difficult to do without the microtransactions because yeah. it was such a grind, like actu- an actual grind where you're literally doing the same three tasks over and over again yeah. to, to be able to finish the game for 20 hours straight. It's This isn't that. Um, this is a very different situation where it's like it's it's very much an open world RPG and you're not meant to go everywhere at, at the beginning. And that's OK, because, again, in theory, if you could, you could just skip to the end of the game if you want to. You, in theory, you could kill the final boss. You could just walk up to them because you can walk to the final area of the game at the beginning if you want to. Ooh. Ooh, just like Breath spicy. of the Wild. You can, yeah. like, you can go to Ganon's Castle in Breath of the Wild yeah. anytime you want to. I, I, totally I, I fought Ganon, like, that was the first thing I did. I got off the plateau, fought Ganon, game over. That's how, and you I fucked Ganon, sorry? Yeah, I, the, I, the, I, I power fucked Ganon. That's uh, why you have speed runs of Breath of the Wild that are I always thought Luke would be, a Link would be a bottom. No. Oh. No. Very surprising. Yeah. Wow, yeah, he's, Calamity. He's, he's, oh, Calamity, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very wily. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, no. Calamity would be the name of their sex tape. Uh, it is, actually. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, like, Search for that in Pornhub right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, that being said, we're going to move on <laughs> from that. How do you think of that? Yeah, how? You're not leaving me much to work with. Um, no, so I just want to kind of wrap the discussion on that by saying that as someone who's played the game as long as I have, and, mm. and Brock, you can test to this because you've also played, not as much, but you've Not played. as much, but I've been playing. But yeah, I, I, I never felt incentivized once. So you spend microtransa- like money on microtransactions. And again, I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Yeah. This is why I made, wanted to make sure that we publicly talked about it on the cast. I, I mean, I want to say this first and foremost, though. Like, It frustrates me because I think that there are parts of Polygon and a bunch of these other publications that are really fucking good. They're like 
I mean, especially when back when when the McElroy brothers were part of Polygon, they were doing some really good content, like some really fun, really funny, really interesting stuff. But I still think like even people like Pat and stuff like that, they still have like they'll have some interesting and good things to say. But every once in a while, yeah. they'll they'll do shit like this, and it kind of hurts yeah. their credibility. And I hear where they're coming from. Like, yeah. we should not give uh, 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 game developers a break on the microtransaction thing. Like, we need mm-hmm. to hold their feet to the fire on that shit as much as possible, mm-hmm. because the reality is that like they they can and do cross the line all the time. Yeah, it sounds like they didn't this time. No, it doesn't. The game doesn't feel artificially inflated. Yeah, because because you have a leveling system in it. Yeah, like you, you're getting. I find you get an XP at a really good rate. So, so th- this this blows me out, especially because it like it hurts. Yeah, it, it it hurts gaming journalism. It's one of those For things sure. where it's like when I see sucks. the headline, Assassin's Creed Odyssey's best feature will cost you ten dollars. Come across, which is a, another Polygon article. Yeah. Um, I, I just have to shake my head at it because it's it's untrue. It's, it's, it's untrue. I mean, for some people, yes. If you if you're one of those people who wants to pay for the the ability to level faster, if you're uh, if you don't have a lot of time, I understand why why they include that feature. They include that feature in almost every RPG you play. Like Tales of Brazaria is an RPG I love. Um, but if you want an XP boost or if you want to just add extra char- levels to your character, that's fine. I have no problem with that, especially because it's not. Again, the game doesn't feel like it was intentionally bloated to force you into a situation where you would buy that. Um, nor does it feel like, you know, that that's a, you're missing out if you don't pay for that. So yeah. um, that's just why it, it angers me a little bit, especially considering the fact that I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is really well designed and doesn't feel like that at all. And it, whereas there are much more egregious cases of this yeah. than something like this game. Yeah. So I mean, the reality is that we are creeping further towards the games as service future, the the dark yeah. dystopia, where every game is like that. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of shit like that in, in Forza Horizon. There's a bunch of shit like that in... It, in every game. <laughs> almost every game right now. So, and that's kind of frustrating, because mm-hmm. uh, we pay a lot for video games as it is, and you just kind of want to play yeah. the video game. Also, fun fact, for those of you who are j- actually jumping into Assassin's Creed Odyssey for the first time, and you want a level boost and don't want to spend any money, there is a way to do that. Because with if you through the power of you play, you play is actually useful for something, Drew. You can use your you play points to buy XP boosts if you want them. Yo, I fuck with you play. Yeah, see there you go. I have like, I like you play. Uh, I got whoa, a su- whoa, whoa, what the fuck did you just say? I got a sweet syndicate skin yeah. from you play. Yeah. All right. There's some good things. There's actually good good items in this game for on you play as well. So it was the it same as uh what was the last Ubisoft game I played? Uh it Far, had, Far Cry? Yeah, Far Cry is a good yeah, Uplay shit too. too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some good skins. You play is, mm, it's a slow ass program. It is yeah. really bad. I have like, but and it's got rewards. Yeah, I have I like two thousand rewards there, points. Yeah, and I have, it buys you everything on the I store. I have here so many it. things. Like <laughs> I, I have unlimited. You play like rewards. Every yeah. time that ugly ass logo pops up, like it literally, like the hair on the back of my neck stands up. I'm like, fuck, fucking you play shit. But they're like, sign in with your you play account. I'm like, fucking shit. Fuck, but what? you love Uplay. This is Brock, and he stands behind Uplay. And to be fair, it's not you. You play anymore. It's Ubisoft Club, because oh, they got. Because yeah. remember, a long time ago, there when we, I think three years <laughs> yeah. ago, they were like, we, we're getting rid of Uplay, and everyone cheered, and then they just turned into Ubisoft, Ubisoft Club, Club, and it's yeah. the same thing. It's the same thing. Because I've had my account since like 2008. It's essentially a unified microtransaction portal. Is basically what it is. But right. you don't pay for it. Yeah, you don't pay for anything. It's just rewards you earn from playing their games. It's really bizarre. Like, hey, I killed a thousand guys in Far Cry, so now I have a hundred Uplay points that I can spend on things. So bizarre. Like, just put that in the game. I don't understand why there has to be this extra layer of nonsense. <laughs> I don't get it. I really don't. I fundamentally don't. Well, I think they do that. There's a. I think the reason they do that is because it's um because it connects to all your Ubisoft purchases across all platforms. I, I know, including it's, including PC. It's fucking weird. I don't care about that. Like, yeah. I super like don't give a fuck. Like, I, like, yeah. I pr- like, I played Far Cry 2 on PC, and, and I earned you play points. Drew. Cool. Cool. I, I, when I Whenever I see that fucking login screen come up, I just want to throw my controller <laughs> through a window. <laughs> it automatically logs me in. I'm good to go. I'm ready. I'm you playing all day long. I might you... just be mad because I forgot my, my Ubisoft Club password. You know, they make idea. buttons for resetting, right? 
No. I wish the I wish you could do that as a human. Just reset. Just yeah. reset. Just reset. Just what if you forgot your human passport? I keep taking mushrooms and it's not reset in my brain the way it says it's going to on the internet. <laughs> it's probably because I'm buying from a sketchy guy named Tom behind a McDonald's, but you know. Yeah, if some guy could just send me an email so I could just start my life again, that'd Is be great. Is it Tom from MySpace? Yes, it is, actually, yeah. MySpace Tom. He takes really nice photos of me and uh, gives me mushrooms. Yeah. Excellent. He's actually a photographer now. He takes really incredible photos. Tom he has a Brady. really good Instagram page. It's on fleek, as the kids say. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he's also a millionaire and doesn't give a fuck. So, you know. Just roll on them. But you know what's cooler than a million dollars? What? A billion dollars. What, what's cooler than a billion dollars? A billion and one dollars. You know what's cooler than being cool? Ice, ice cold! cold! Well, uh, speaking of ice cold. Yeah. Segway. It wasn't a very elegant segue. Um, speaking of a game that... So going from a game that really impressed me and exceeded my expectations to a game that actually disappointed me a bit. Mega Man 11. Oh, shit. You didn't like Mega Man fucking 11? No, 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 no. I didn't say I didn't like it. It disappointed you. It disappointed me. because, yeah. And to be fair, I had really high expectations going into Mega Sometimes Man. Sometimes it's worse, man. You Sometimes know, like, it makes it worse. Cause when, when my parents say to me, like, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. So Mega Man 11, of course, is out this week. Uh, it's... I think it's actually pretty expensive for what you're getting, which is Mega Man 11 is very much a 8-bit Mega Man game that's not 8-bit. How many bosses are in this? Eight. Okay. And then you go to one castle. Is there one castle stage? There's only one it's castle It's not three? Stage. It's not three. That's or not, a, that's a or failure, not two. That's a Because even like most of the, like Mega Man uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6 all had two castle layers. Yeah. And the X's had two castle layers. And the X's had two uh, castle layers as well. Yeah. Whereas this goes very much back to one. You fight really awesome enemies in the castle, and I actually think the castle this time around is really well, well designed. Mm -hmm. And the eight robot masters are pretty cool. It's just there's something about this game that isn't. Who, who's your favorite robot master in this one? Who's my favorite robot master in this game? Yeah, it's probably Blockman because he's so weird. Blockman. He's Ooh. the one of these. In, he's the one that's in the demo, and he's the first one we saw. He's the but power he's of blocks. Who's yeah. who's the worst of them? What's the most ridiculous? The most ridiculous one is Tundra Man because he likes to skate like he's got skates. There's a Tundra Man? There's a Tundra Man. We've already had, like, a, an Ice Man and a Chill Man. Get this. Get, get where you fight him. You fight him in, like, a boss area that has, uh, like, a, a dinosaur skeleton in the back and then ice around it. Does that sound familiar? Is that Chill Penguin? No. No, we, we fought a similar, I think it was the, I can't remember the cold robot master from Mega Man 8. That had the exact same background. All right. <laughs> there are just a lot of cold robot masters. Like there are a lot of cold, there's one in pretty much every Mega Man game. Yeah. Um, but I think... The thing that makes it disappointing is I think the game overall is actually pretty solid as far as the mechanics, as far as the, the bosses um, and everything else. What's disappointing about this game is uh, the double gear system because the double gear system feels too powerful. Like it feels like you've er like it basically breaks the progression system of Mega Man. So in the Mega Man games, what's interesting about them is that the longer you play them and the, the, the game and the more boss robots you take down, the more powerful you feel like Mega Man gets. Right. In this, they basically give Mega Man his most powerful weapon at the beginning. And his most powerful power. So, like, when you get the other powers from the Robot Masters, they almost feel underwhelming. Okay. And apparently, because... Do they have utility then? Because, like, I mean, like, it's not always about strength. Sometimes it's about, like, oh, this, like, power from Robot Master lets me jump further or do something cool or, like, freeze enemies and jump on them or something like I that. I mean, you have, like, uh, for example, Blockman's, he allows you to... Uh, uh, it kill enemies in like a line in front of you that sort of above you. Like it's good for attacking enemies in the air. Um, or Breakman uh, is good for. Um, Breakman? It's not Breakman. Begins with a B. Whatever. Blastman. That's Blast, what it is. Blastman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He basically. He, Breakman he gives you a. Like it's kind of like the. Uh, um, like you basically use Mega Man's body to sort of propel him forward. He's got a drill for a hand kind of thing. Okay. Like that, like it gives you a, like a charging ability to help you with platforming. But for the most part, no, they're not like utility powers or anything like that. You have, um, it get, they give you almost different attack patterns, but um, none of them really seem like super interesting or really changes the way that the, the, the game, the way that the double gear system does, where you can slow down time or you can fire basically the, um, like the third charge shot level uh, that you would for Mega Man X in this game using the, the power shot. So, um, I think that's what's sort of disappointing about it. So I think that Mega Man 11, if first of all, if you like the old school Mega Man games, you should still play, pick it up and play it. Yeah. Uh, also, if you are new to the Mega Man series, this is the best one to start with. 
because yeah. you because it has four different difficulty modes. Superhero mode is very 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 hard, but if you play, you can play on casual, which is easier than any of the other Mega Man games ever. Like you won't die from like you die from fall damage, but that's it pretty much. So uh, it's it's interesting that they have it set up so that anyone can pretty much play this game. Uh, but it's a tough sell at forty dollars, I think, because. Um, it, you again, you can finish the game in less than an hour if you want, because there's only one castle stage, remember? So, um, if you already know the boss order, you're, you're pretty much, you've, you're, you're spending about an hour, hour and a half with this game mm. for 30 bucks. So it's a little bit of a tough sell, but overall, I still think if you're a Mega Man fan, you should play it. But I'm, again, I'm left with a little bit of disappointment in my heart. Like it's not, a, I think it's probably <laughs> as good as Mega Man 8 is. That's what I'd say. That's where I would sort of rank it. I would rank it behind all the NES Mega Man games, and then below, well, at about the same place I would put Mega Man 8. So, there you go. All right. Uh, Drew, this week got even sadder because we talked about Telltale a lot lately. Yeah. And more stuff would happen with Telltale this week, Drew. Shit got even worse. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. So, tell, the ongoing saga of Telltale, uh, the whole, like, they got laid off without any notice, or, or they... I don't know if they termed it laid off or fired. I don't know legally how it works in the United States if they make a distinction. Nobody got uh, severance. Nope. All their health care basically got cut off like two weeks after that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a surprise to everybody. Some people were hired very recently. Like a week before it happened. Yeah. 250 people down to 25. Uh, For a ske yeah. Uh, they were like a skeleton crew. What they, what they called it to, to finish sort of some of the, the contractual obligations that they had? The Netflix mm -hmm. show. The yeah. Netflix show specifically. Uh, and them. While that was happening, we we're hearing all these rumors that like shit was really bad at the studio. Like that people were coming out and saying, like, hey, now that I don't work there, like 80 hour crunch weeks, like 60 hour standard weeks, crazy shit, like um, you know, the the studio sort of run ragged, pushed further than they should have, took on too many projects, um, you know, people complaining about like conditions all over the place, saying that they're racing to finish it. And we talked about how, like, yeah, obviously, because the products yeah, we, we, when we talked to Brock about his Batman experience yeah. and how the game barely worked. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and we know that the games went from like, they went on this curve of like their quality increased and their innovation increased. And then like, it actually went down. Like the quality went down. They stopped innovating. Uh, the writing even, which was the thing they were famous yeah. for, wasn't very good. Like Al uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I never ever yeah. ended up playing it, but I know you really I, didn't like it. I at really all. did not. Like it from the writing perspective. Yeah. So it all made sense. I, re I remember you being very mad about Guardians of the Galaxy. I was extremely mad about Guardians of the Galaxy. So all this shit happened, uh, and they said, okay, so we're going to lay off all these people. Uh, we're down to 25 people. We knew that, okay, the studio is probably pretty mismanaged, but they're just trying to eke out what they can. Then there was all this talk about, like, maybe we'll find another company to finish Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, and even the point where, like, Robert Kirkman has said something about, like, I'm not worried about this. Like, they're going to finish it. Like, this is, like, we're going to tell Clementine's story. So, yeah. like, it sounds like there are a lot of people who are saying, like, yeah, this was going to happen. Um, and it's, things seem positive. Like, things were a little bit. I mean, it's not ideal, but even to that, people seemed really pissed off. And yeah. people were understandably upset. Because there were a lot of people, like, I remember when all those stories were being passed around, saying, like, Walking Dead could come back. And a lot of people were saying... Yeah, but could you maybe pay your employees severance <laughs> instead? Like, yeah. how about that? Uh, and then, and just when it seemed like, okay, maybe things were going to get better and maybe Telltale was going to turn this thing around. <clears throat> no. Uh, the last 25 people that were the uh, uh, the company abruptly had their employment uh, terminated as well. Yeah. Uh, and again, we found this out uh, from the employees. Yep. They, yeah, they, they tweeted took his letter yeah. and said, hey, I showed up today. I'm one of the last 25, and I'm my job's done. I'm I'm gone. They're sh shutting everything down. Uh, so again, someone's gonna write a really interesting yeah. documentary about this. Don't be surprised if Jason Schreier writes a fucking book about this because, like, mm -hmm. shit, dude. Like this this whole fucking thing sucks. It puts the finger on the the head of just like how shitty labor rights are in the games industry. Um, you know, we know people are chronically underpaid, overworked, mistreated, uh, in the case of like, if you work for, uh, 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 Riot Games or some other places or, or uh, uh, apparently like it's quite, you know, um, misogynistic and, and like, you know, 
they're they're not like healthy workplaces for people to be. Like there's just like there just seems to be problems all over the place with video games in terms of like labor and stuff like that. So I don't know. So somebody wrote an article the other day said like video games are headed towards a crash. I'm worried that that's gonna happen. Yeah. Because the economy around video games is kind of shit. So what can you do? Like between yeah. like everything we hear about things things like microtransactions and how publishers abuse studios, how studios themselves abuse their employees, like the whole thing just seems fucked. Everybody's trying to like eke out like another five dollars from everybody everywhere. They're trying to get mm -hmm. as much productivity out of their employees and they're trying to get another twenty bucks out of you after you already bought the game and I don't know, man. It's just yeah. fucked. I I I I don't feel like this thing is just sort of like representative of like how not positive and optimistic I feel about the future of video games as it exists right now. Like sort of like the economic system that's grown yeah. up around it. It feels shitty. Like it's one of those things. Like this is this is a telltale case of no no pun intended. Yeah. That video game prices should maybe be even be more expensive. Yeah. So they, they there isn't much as as much of an emphasis on the developers to eke every dime out of people. Well, I mean, the reality is this is that the part of this is based around the fallacy of infinite growth, right? Yeah. The whole notion that like there is a like every business sector will keep growing forever. I think at a certain point and and with video games, video games were on a a, a very strong yeah. upward trend for a long time because video games didn't exist you know, prior to 1980, essentially, especially home video games. Uh, and then all they did was become more pervasive and more easier to purchase over time. And now we've hit that point where, like, in the mid-90s, where, like, it was very easy to own and purchase video games and have them at home, right? Accessibility was no longer a, bar a barrier. So then it was just, like, how many people were playing video games and how many people could get on board? And it was typically a youth thing, right? Well, now we're at the point where everybody's fucking playing video games. My grandmother plays Fortnite on her iPhone. Like, it's just, like... <laughs> I, that's not true. My grandmother sadly. Can that be but, like the title of this this uh, podcast and sure. then like the thumbnail? Yeah. My grandmother plays uh, Fortnite. Fortnite on iPhone, uh, but like everybody's playing video games, right? So th the growth there doesn't exist anymore. So the only way to grow now to increase your profits is to get people to pay more for video, for video games. And how do you do that? Right. And people have suggested that the eco economic model of well, there's no growth in just raising the price of video games. Right. Because you, you raise the price of video games and then that's it. Right? Like, then they're just there. You just have to keep raising them and people are never going to be happy with that. Right. But, like, also, people who purchase things at retail don't expect things that way. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, like Which is tough. It's a tough sell, too, especially because video games are so much more expensive to make now, too. Yeah. Like, the, again, the whole mismanagement at Telltale was due to, number one, their game's not really selling that well, and number two, like, development of a new engine is, is expensive. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, with that is, like, the games weren't... Brock, why weren't Telltale's video games selling well? They weren't very good. Why weren't they very like, good? No one was giving them any love, like, yeah. or... Pre like, there was no buzz around any of them. They had no yeah. marketing dollars to promote their games. They were just kind of going off big names, like yeah. the titles they owned, right? Well, but, uh, no, and they just weren't very good. They were very... They were all over the place. You never knew when they were coming out. The schedule is all strange. You forgot what was happening. They drop in sales so quickly, so people would never buy them at full price. Yeah, you could buy. You usually get the first episode free. That was probably you enough. You usually for get some the people. Telltale collection of all their games for like forty for pennies. Yeah. Uh, and it just got lost. Like those games got lost. They just weren't good. They the were broken. They were so broken and, beyond belief. And it's abundantly clear that the reason why they weren't good was because they were taking on too much work and yeah. didn't have enough people. Right. That was it. Yeah. Right. Like if the quality went down, people didn't want to buy them. People didn't fucking care anymore. I assume by the time this episode comes out, Telltale have put out a statement that they're officially closed down. Yeah. Because everyone's they're, gone. They're going into Chapter 11, for sure. Yeah, right? Everyone's gone. It's bankruptcy protection, and they're going to auction off everything. If someone's going to buy uh, all the assets associated with uh, the, the Walking Dead. But what assets? Like they don't own that, though. The they're Netflix show is done. It doesn't look like it's happening. Well, Ryan... That's not how licensing works. So ah. They own the assets, but they don't own the property. But okay. they own, but they have a have a license. So that means that they can sell that as a sub license. Like, okay. like if you own a, a if you own a condo, mm -hmm. right? Or rather, if you uh, if you rent a, an apartment, you can you can sublet that to someone else, okay. right? Uh, like that's the, that's kind of and, and then mm -hmm. they can take over the lease. So someone could buy yeah. essentially what's left in the contract. Let's say they had like the licensing deal with Kirkman, which is specifically with. Kirkman and the comic book. It's not with the TV show. Okay. Right. 
So, like, someone could buy what's left in however left that's long and, and fulfill whatever yeah. and try to fulfill. And I guess it goes. really just determines and it's the independence Kirkman. on the, yeah. the, the, how their license work with Kirkman. But, but like, and it's in Kirk, Kirkman's best interest to transfer that license to another company. Right. But right? does anyone want to work with this engine? And does anyone want to finish this series? That's yeah. the problem. Well, and they don't yeah. have to, right? No, like, again, you can, you can port the assets as long as, depending on how much work that is, but, like, you can rip the models, you can take the, the, uh, the, the, what is it? The um, the textures and all that kind of shit. Like you can at least take that kind of work, but the, the the really hard work of like the scripting that goes into the game and stuff like your decisions and stuff and how do you port that over? That's going to be like incredibly difficult. Yeah, so. and and it seems to. I wonder what happened at Netflix this week because they announced on Tuesday that you can now choose your own adventure on like the new season of Black Mirror and yeah, a bunch yeah. of their shows, but did not list Minecraft. Meaning yeah. that Minecraft show is not coming out. Well, so. that that would explain what happened with these people. Yeah, that so would, they must the have next day. Yeah. yeah, like they just must. Because same with Stranger Things. Because I think uh, what ended up happening was they were under contract to do a Stranger Things uh, game for five episodes, and I think they that. From what I heard, that contract completely negate. Like, yeah, next. the Stranger Thing game will probably happen. Just at the, no, Netflix though. is looking for another developer. Yeah, they'll find another developer for that. Yeah. Everyone's gonna bite at Stranger Things because it's the most overrated yeah. show of the last two years. Well, and it, like the, those rights have gone back to Netflix. That's why, like, my thought process with The Walking Dead might be the same. So I, I don't understand I Stranger Things. So it's just eighties, eighties fucking nerd porn. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I liked the first season of Stranger Things. The first Things. season was good. I hated the second this season. Was, Unbelievably terrible. It was not good. Like, it just felt like completely... Like, it was just like... Pandering. Yeah, the first one was like, oh, this is fun. Like, it's a good, solid story that had this flavor. And the second one felt like, yeah. They had no idea what the story was. It was just like, uh, what's going to be the best fan service? Yeah, exactly. Oh, look at this 80s stuff that happened. It's the 80s. Here's more 80s stuff. Yay. Like, the whole thing where Eleven goes and meets her sister. Yeah. Was one of the worst pieces of TV I've ever seen in my life. it was so bad. Not good. To be fair, we all know the real reason behind that is just the 80s are the greatest time period, Drew. That is 100% false. Yeah, that's not... That's not you are incorrect. was bad. Uh, 1985 about? is probably the best year for movies the ever The music happened. was bad? The music was bad. Yeah, 80s music is great. Tears for Fears is one of the greatest bands ever. Oh, I, know I mean... About. Greatest? Greatest? Tears for Fears. Greatest! These are pretty underrated. There's some pretty garbage shit in the 80s. There's too, a lot of garbage bro. music. A lot of hair metal. A lot of poison. hair metal, man. Poison. Scorpions, baby. Scorpion? Yeah. Poison, like we had For every, you know, Joy Division, we had, yeah, like, a hundred okay. fucking really bad heavy metal bands. We had Motley Crue. Yeah. Anthrax. Yeah. Nope. Twisted no Sister. Nope. Megadeth. Nope. Um, no thanks. Yeah. Metallica. No thanks. Me- oh. What? They're the edgiest of any but, but that was when the t- Metallica had their best albums was in the 80s. Yeah, and that's not saying much. Like, Ma- Master of Puppets was the high point for them. Yeah. It was all downhill from there, it and re- it wasn't that good. Literally. Wow. To be fair, that that is accurate, but Master Puppets was amazing. 1985, great year for for movies, though. Great year for movies. But everything else sucked. I hate E.T. Come at me. Okay, that's fine. I'll do the the fucking louder the Crowder thing. You couldn't handle it as a kid. It was too emotional. I hate E.T. Changed my mind. I just didn't like it. I love the Goonies. Fucking yeah, Goonies the Goonies is great. is great. Stand by me. Come La- on. Last Starfighter. Howard the Duck came out in the eighties, and Howard the Duck is still the best Marvel movie ever made. I still is like the Howard the Duck. Howard I the liked du- it back then. I watch I it all the time. Like I still think it's weird that Howard the Duck has sex with a human. Yeah, uh, but there's a it, duck with tits. Yeah, there's a duck with tits. Also, that's really weird. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd's in that movie. That guy did. He was on so much cocaine. Yeah. All right, now that you said that, Drew, you're never allowed to talk bad about Sonic 06 ever again. What? Why? Because your biggest problem with Sonic 06 is him Sonic kissing a human woman, but then you said it's okay for a, a, a cartoon duck to have sex with a, a, a female woman. Well, she's not, he's not a cartoon. Human. He's an animatronic duck. It doesn't matter if he's a cartoon. It does. He's still it does. A it very much does. But she's also a cartoon. What? I mean, in so- have you not played Sonic 06? She's a cartoon. She they exist in the same world. They're both cartoons. Uh no, it's very I hope Sonic fucks in that new movie. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see I just want to like see Like the Michaels. cast of Riverdale. Oh. I think they should do a crossover. They're filming in the same locations. What? Riverdale in the Sonic movie? Oh yeah. Is Sonic in a does that yeah. what does that have Ryan Reynolds in it? What I happened? mean, Sonic, Sonic would cross over with Archie. I could see it. Is he yeah. is Sonic gonna guest star on Sabrina? Is that how I'm excited for work? Sabrina? That show is gonna be dope. I have No? I have a review for it. Do you? Yeah. What did you say? I can't say yet. Oh, it's, it's not out yet. I don't yet. think yet. It's not out yet. I don't okay. think my embargo's lifted. Okay. 
<laughs> <laughs> like if I liked Riverdale, would I like this show? Oh yeah. Okay, let's oh, be clear. Yeah. I ironically like. I mean, Riverdale. unfortunately, the problem with Sabrina was CW was supposed to do it, uh, and yeah. then they backed out. They right? backed out. And Netflix was like, "Fuck it, we'll take two seasons," so yeah. they can't cross over anymore with Riverdale, which makes no sense oh, because they set up it in the first season so much. And the new season of Riverdale looks like there's some real fucking magic going on. Because yeah, there's, there's like a devil monster fighting them now. There's a spooky demon monster. Yeah, there's yeah. a spooky demon. That, like, I'm hoping they're going to go full spooky Riverdale. Like, full, like, uh, like Jughead is a werewolf. Archie's a vampire. Uh, Betty and Veronica. Uh, is Riverdale it, literally uh, just Scooby-Doo? Is that, that what I'm hearing? Is that I, what no, it is? it's like it's like porno. Oh, excellent. It's like porno with monsters now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, real really weird. weird. It's there's real a, weird. There's a scene where Archie and Veronica's dad wrestle, and it was it, very... It is very sexual. It very, is very sweaty. sexual attention. High school also, boys and full adult males should not be wrestling. No, no. Also, I don't know how that man is Veronica's father. Like, <laughs> he looks like there's maybe, like, ten years between them. Like, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> like, his, her mother, yes. Her yeah. mother definitely is, is a woman sure. who, who is, like, age-appropriate. But Remember, they're father, supposed to be 16, though. Yeah, they're they're just there's not. But they're, they're played they're, by twenty six year olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all works. They're out. played by some of our contemporaries, essentially. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that weird fucking New Zealand kid though. That Archie's fake red hair has got to end. It's real bad because like, they couldn't have picked a natural color of red, right? You know, or a kid that could sing if you're going to sing all the time. Yeah, that's no, notice they pulled back a lot on that. Yeah, yeah. it was awkward. Yeah. You're missing it, Ryan. This is like what happened when you talked about Mega Man. I just zoned out there for 20 minutes. I was yeah. like, I don't know what's going on, but Riverdale! Yeah, Riverdale fucks! Josie and the Pussycats, yeah. yeah. Mm. You want to spend the next 20 minutes talking about My Hero Academia? We can talk about that. No, well. not really. Yeah. You don't want to go plus ultra? You don't want to go beyond? No. Man. What are you no. talking about? My Hero Academia, it's an anime. It's really good. Oh, it's about anime. superheroes. I'm actually surprised Brock hasn't seen it. I, I should watch it. I tell chicks at the bar I've watched it. I hadn't, which doesn't impress them. The, 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 hang out at bars fun fact, anime. last week, I hadn't, no, two weeks ago, I hadn't seen a, a single episode, binged the entire three seasons in, in three days. I, I, and now I can't get enough. It's really good. Yesterday, in a, a just a, a, a fit of complete insanity, I threw on a compilation of like, uh, it was like, uh, advertising, um, like TV advertisements and like the cartoon openings for like long forgotten uh, uh, 80s cartoons. So things like Centurions and like, um, uh, uh, fuck, what, what else? Uh, like a whole bunch uh, 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 visionaries and like shit like that. Um, uh, Jason, the Wheel Warriors, like all these fucking shows. And you know what I realized? What? The reason why I like anime is because we all fucking grew up on anime. Well, duh. Like that's what I that's all, what I learned a long time ago. All that shit in the eighties was all like it was all produced by and even like GoBots and Transformers. Yeah. All that stuff has its roots in like those are toys made in Japan, animated in Japan, and brought to did, uh, and, and like marketed to kids. Did you like in, Jap playing Japanese video games on your NES? Guess what? They're all rooted in anime. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking weird, man. Astro Boy is my shit. I also grew up on Rugrats. Rug Segway, because this is the craziest thing I heard all week. Okay, all right, all right. What? I'm going to, okay, so remember the Rugrats movie? Yes. The Jungle one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you know who did this theme song for that song? Was it or you? Or that movie? What? Was it you? It was Blackstreet, Maya, and Maze. What the fuck? What? What? And then there was an original song by No Doubt and Elvis Costello on the soundtrack. Wait, Lisa what? Loeb, Lisa Loeb and Iggy Pop have a song on that soundtrack. Uh, Busta Rhymes has his own song. Devo has a song. Rakim has a song. <laughs> that soundtrack I, fucks, man. I was bouncing to this soundtrack all week. It is Crazy. It's so weird. That's nuts. Yeah, so Mace did the theme song for the Rugrats movie. I haven't, I haven't heard it, Lisa it, Loeb's name in forever. No, I, neither have I. I yeah. thought I told you that we won't stop. It's a good soundtrack. We can't stop. Elvis Costello, no doubt. Yeah. Also, Mace is terrible. I'm sorry, Brock. No, no, he isn't. He's great. <laughs> All he does is mumble, though. <laughs> this is this might be the last song that Mace ever released. He's no Migos. <laughs> yeah, he's no Migos. He's yeah. no mumble rap. Did he? No did he rap. also become a preacher like DMX <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that other rapper that we were talking about? No, but his brother did. Oh, excellent. yeah. That's what they all do. Yeah. All the rappers become preachers. That's what Drew and I discovered. Ma a few Mace weeks became ago. a preacher. Yeah. Well, DMX also did. Yeah. Mace did become a preacher. Mace did. Yeah, and Mace did become See? a preacher. Th that's yeah. what that's their profession after they're rappers. Yeah. I mean, he may not be now. I don't know. Like the man is—he's he's clearly you know, he's, preach, he's preaching to me. 
Yeah. Do the fa- soundtrack the, of Rugrats. Rugrats. That's you funny. thought we had nothing to talk about today, and here we are. Yeah. None of it has to do with video are games. <laughs> an hour and five minutes in. Uh, oh. we, we have talked about a lot of weird shit today. How did we get from Telltale to this? <laughs> uh, we're telling stories just like Telltale did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. Telltale forgot. This is what happens when you have an extra button. You hit that button and we go off the tangent. We yeah. go off the rails. Yeah, it actually. Extra- remind me never to press that button ever again. All right. <laughs> press my buttons, Ryan. Well, I woke up. Anyway. I started this episode not knowing if I slept tonight and feeling tired, but I'm awake now. Good. Good. Awake with the glory of video games. You're awake just in I time to go wrap back. the show. I want to go play some Assassin's Creed, though. You should. It's really good. Oh, go play cool. it. Anyways, before Drew, we go. Drew, what's on your shirt today? Before we go. It's it's the shield from Destiny. Oh. And some pretty flowers. It's a cool shirt. That's what this is. What the uh, this is this is the guardian symbol. And that's the. You see, we're not on video right now, so no yeah. one can see you. Yeah. you no one can see you it's pointing. It's a big purple shield. <laughs> okay. And that's that's like the the super for the shield guardian. Cool. Yeah. So Drew's wearing a Destiny shirt today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wearing a Boba Fett shirt today because uh, John Favreau announced the uh, casting for McClorian. That looks fucking McClorian? awesome. Mc- McClorian? Is, is Med- like McClorian? McClorian? Are you Mandalorian? Mandalorian! There yeah. we go. Is McClorian yeah. the new burger from McDonald's? Yes. Oh, I need a McClorian burger. Mm. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, Taki Wahidi is doing an episode, and that excites me to oh. no end. He's doing the Fuck. finale of the series. Oh. Yeah, they got some good casting. Fuck. Yeah. All right. So, John Favreau, Star Wars TV series, Taika Waititi. That's it. We're fucking done. Yeah. They'll still find He's a way got, to make uh, it terrible. No, they will not. It's eight episodes. They got some killer other directors. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's uh, it's like a diverse cast of people. Sounds pretty funky. I'm stoked. It's, it's, it's going to be about... But now people are arguing if Boba Fett and Django Fett are actually... In it? No. Oh. Are, uh... What you call McLorians? The fuck is it? Mandalorian. Mandalorians in the new canon. I don't think they are. How? Because they reverted. They were only the. They were only that in the EU canon. But they were always Mandalorian. No, apparently they weren't. What? Jango Fett was not a Mandalorian. Apparently he wasn't. He, he was a fake he, Mandalorian. Apparently he wasn't actually. He might have been just a dude to war Mandalorian. He was. Armor. He's more than Boba Fett was. Yeah. Which makes no... But that. they're the same person. Well, they's no, a they, clone, but yeah, Boba Fett didn't grow up in on Mandalore. It doesn't matter. He's still a clone of Django yeah, Fett. Yeah, so Django apparently Fett Django Fett just grew person. up there, but isn't actually one. Ah. Which is all kinds of... It's setting the setting the fans but, on fire again. But that would mean that the clones... Star Wars fans love arguing. That would mean that all the clones are not Mandalorians either. I mean... That, but they're not they're saying they're, they are. I mean, That's a thing. Well, what is a Mandalorian? I mean, really. They they originate on the world of Mandalore. Really. So if you were a clone from the clone world of... But their genetics are from a Mandalorian. Right. So, like... It's if, just like if, saying, if, Drew, I was, if I was black and I lived in Canada, would I be Canadian or African? Well, sometimes people say that they, that you'd be African. So Some now we're talking about not. the difference between ethnicity and national and cultural identity. And those two things are very different from one another. And the reality is that Boba Fett may or may not be a Mandalorian because he knows nothing of his Mandalorian roots. He knows nothing of the Mandalorian people. It's in his blood. He has no, he has no ownership over that heritage. He's never been there. All he's got is a helmet from his dad whose head got chopped off by a man who says this party is over. It's Boom. True. He did say that. Video games. Please don't hit the table. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll, I'll edit that out. <laughs> you're, the, you're the one person that always tells us not to hit the table, and then you go and hit the table. Well, you can spot the table out of emphasis. Anyways, we got to wrap the show because we're, we've been going long. So, yeah. Drew Plug Skull. Uh, I'm at D. McMillan on Twitter and stuff. You know you know all the rest of it. Go to game moosecom There you go. Uh, Brock, where can people find you? Oh, man, you can find me on the internet. I'm back again. Um, yeah, I'm back. Please so, you can find again. me on Twitter and Instagram again. Cool. Where can they find you on Twitter? Search Brock. <laughs> Search Brock. You know how many Search Brock's Eddie out there? Eddie Brock McLaughlin, okay? <laughs> Venom! Are you actually going to change your name to Eddie Brock McLaughlin? No. Please don't. It's Right now, it's uh, Electric Broccoli. You, you chose wisely. <laughs> you chose wisely. Yeah. Did, did you see what my... I, I have a Halloween <laughs> name on Twitter. You know how people come up with Halloween names because it's October? You know, so there's like, uh, uh, you know, something spooky something. Uh, you know, Halloween names. I, I'm aware, yes. Okay, did you see what my Halloween name is? No. Here's my Halloween name. <laughs> but that's just Halloween name. Halloween name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm boring. Yeah. I'll never change my name on Twitter. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm not really that. It's a thing. But you just changed it. You yeah, just but, showed me on your phone. But I'm mocking people who change it in a way. 
Anyways, go to boxstargaming.com. You didn't mention that. Sure. Last but not least. Do whatever least. you want. Yeah. You guys live your own lives, man. Okay, yeah. you just uh, just just living just, in the other. Just walk yeah. a dog, eat some barrels. Yeah, fuck, you know. Uh, say that every episode. Search, uh, go, if you haven't watched it, go watch uh, Shrek is Love on uh, YouTube. Yeah, oh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of basketball shit this week, so uh, if, that's, Why? if that's your bag, you know. I'm going to Montreal with the Raptors on Wednesday, and then I'm doing some Raptors thing on Saturday. I don't know. What? Ball is life, baby. Ball is life. <laughs> Who are you? What has happened? And then I'm at the home opener on the week after. I'm fucking ball is life. Jesus Christ. Woo! Guys, Brock is late stage capitalism. <laughs> That's what he is. <laughs> Brock is the one person on this show that actually appreciates sports. No, no, even I don't. Though I'm, uh, even though I'm wearing Calgary Flames. I have a deep, deep hatred for professional sports. By the sports. way, thank God hockey's back, guys. This yeah, week, because yeah, I'm so I happy. I discovered that really hot chicks hang out at basketball games and basketball oh, yeah. courts. Hey, you so. know this? I'm down for that. They're they all bundled tall, up like at hockey games. They want to meet tall dudes with big dicks. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's I would, me. I mean, they I can't see me. I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how tall I'm at home. This is the same reason I'm why I have basketball games, you know? Yeah. I want to meet tall dudes with big dicks. Yeah. Yeah. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter, Ryan Turford. Ryan Turford, that's my name. I can't even fucking segue the show out Whoa, right, correctly. F bomb. Thank guys. Come on, this is a children's show. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. Of course, you can find our website, game moose.com. Uh, listen to my interview with uh, Melissa McCorby and, and learn all about Assassin's Creed story, yeah. please. Uh, you find that on the podcast feed and on the website. Uh, I also unboxed a new Video Games Monthly this week. Uh, it may or may not contain a game from McDonald's in the box. Oh, we'll, yeah. We'll go, go watch the video on, on our YouTube page. Check that out. Or game, go to game-moose.com slash video. You can also check us out on Twitter at game underscore moose underscore cast on Facebook at facebook.com slash game at moose podcast. And, of course, check our podcast out on podcast services across the globe. Anyways, for Brock McLaughlin, who's currently walking around, Drew McMillan, who's... I high kick, but my pants are too tight. Yeah, but no one can see your high kick. Well, no one can see a lot of things. For Brock McLaughlin and Drew McBillan, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 142 of the Game Moose Podcast, and we're out.